Hi, I'm Joe, and this is the Accidental Brewer, or I'm the Accidental Brewer, whatever. And this is my daughter, Hasella, and uh, this is our channel about how to make mead and wine and beer. Now, you know, if you recall in my last episode, I kind of explained why we do this. It's like a family fun thing. Uh, but also, I didn't say, Hasella doesn't drink this stuff. She's not old enough. She just helps do it. It's like a fun science experiment thing. But I also, like, I do this for a hobby. So today we're gonna to make a pie mint. And what is a pie mint? A pie mint is a mead that is made with grapes uh, instead of being made with water uh, for, the, for the juice like kind of portion of it or the liquid portion of it. Um, now I'm not sure if this is an actual like 100% pie mint. I'm doing this with store-bought juice. I made it before uh, and my buddy Ricky, who I mentioned in the last episode, he really liked it a whole lot. So I'm gonna try it again. So basically the ingredients are I've got one stick of cinnamon, four allspice berries, one cardamom pod, and two whole cloves. It's all whole spice that are gonna go in the must for this, and they go in the primary fermentation. Primary fer fermentation and the must. Uh, the must is what you mix your honey and water and liquid into. That's called the must for wine or, or mead. And um, the I'm gonna turn this around so you can see it. But the, uh, the overall of, of this uh, has some sort of um, uh, uh, spice in, included in it. So as I fumble through my words to say things. We're also gonna be using, last time we used um, Lawthen 71B yeast uh, for making a capsicumel. This time we're gonna use Lawthen EC118. Now you may ask why I decided to do that. This may be a slightly higher gravity um, Mead, I'm expecting it to go above 1.1 one for, uh, 1 .1 for first gravity, and uh, that'll probably be somewhere around 13 or 14%. It may go all the way up to like 16 or 17%. This has an alcohol tolerance of 18%, so I just wanted to see how it would work out there. Now I'm going to put half a packet in this. Um, so enough mumbling and fumbling around. Oh yeah, I'm also just using some raw and unfiltered wildflower honey. Um, just one pound of honey. So I don't think this is actually a pie mint because I think that this is a wine with some honey in it, uh, which is a honeyed wine. That's slightly different. But I've also got one cup of um, brown sugar in uh, the tea that I made. I made, um, I used six and I'll pull it out so that you can see it. I just used some Earl Grey tea that I like. It's Earl Grey tea to give it a mouthfeel because it helps it with the feeling more like wine. Um, but it's called the Republic of Tea Earl Grayer. So, and it's spelled it gray like Earl Grey. Um, but it's got black tea with uh, oil of bergamot in it. So I don't know uh, if you like that or not, but I like that tea. So I took six of those little packets that come in that container, dropped them in about, um, let's see, how much of this do I use? About uh, one liter of water. Um, and uh, heated that up uh, to make a tea. And then I poured that, uh, put the, the brown sugar into it, and I poured it into a honey container that I'd used previously. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this um, in here to help uh, send here, to help set this up for the, um, the honey. And it's still warm, but it will cool off before I put my, um, before I put my was left in there. Oh no, I got honeyed. Ah, oh, Casella. Mm, that was a delicious accident. Oh, that honey's so good. It's kind of got like um, uh, it says wildflower honey, but it's got like a, a slightly delicious, almost um, oh, I don't know how to describe that flavor. It's it's tangy, uh, it, but it's it's really it's a wonderful flavor. So the worst thing about doing mead is waiting for the honey to drain. I think I think that's what all of us can agree on. Um, so next thing that we're going to do to be able to make this is I'm going to put a little bit of it's now that the honey's in there. We have to aerate it. I'm going to put a little bit of grape juice in to be able to allow us to get the honey off of the funnel. Now that is uh, this is 100% uh, grape juice. It's Concord grape juice. Welch's Concord grape juice. Uh, the reason that I chose this is while it has ascorbic acid in it, 
It does not have any osphates or phosphates or anything like that. And that'll kill yeast when you're making a wine or a mead. Um, so I'm gonna put a little bit of this in there to get that off. I'll even put a little bit in the honey container that might help us get some of that out. You wanna do that first? Yeah. All right. So we're gonna put a little bit in the honey container first, and then we're gonna put a little bit in the funnel. So let's turn the honey container back over. And I'll just try not to make a mess and pour a bit of this in there. All right, and then you can shake it up to get that out. And while you're shaking that up, I'm gonna pour this over here and try to get a bit of this over here. And again, like uh, like I always say, you know, I'm trying to aerate this, so I don't care if it's adding a little bit of bubbles or anything like that down in here. Um, yeah. Let me grab something, trusty old sanitized paper towel to be able to get the last little bit of this off down in here. All right, now that you're shaking that up, yep, pour it in, there we go. So now we're gonna oxygenate this. I've got a cap here that I can run this in. You can put that over in the sink if you don't mind, please, Costello, thank you very much. Shake it up. If you're a fan of the cars and you're an older person like me, then you might sing Shake It Up by the Cars. You know, shake it up. Do 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 do. Shake it up. But if you're like a seller, you probably sing Shakey, 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 shakey. So just whatever it is that you have to sing when you're doing this, I do it in my head. You know, just remind me, shake it, painter. Um, oh, yeah. That worked out perfectly. Super smart. Um, so it's right at 102 degrees. 100, yeah, yeah, slowing down. It's right at 100 degrees. I was right. I'm surprised I was right. I'm so, so, so few times am I right about things. But we're going to go ahead and pour some. Do you want to pour this in? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there you go. Pour it in. Just pour it, like, kind of pour it towards the back here so, it's, so we can see how the temperature is affected and um, I might drop like and I'm just going to do this because I want to get much of that juice off the inside and let's see so that's brought it down to about 85 degrees I'm going to let that set there for a minute that's also going to affect the gravity reading that we get so I want to let it let it go for a few minutes. So um, it's only got a few degrees to go down. So while we're prepping everything else, we'll just go ahead and set this aside um, and then do the other things that we got to do. And we'll see how that turns out in a moment. Uh, it will affect the gravity reading being a little bit warmer. I want it to go down a few more degrees. It's still up there around 90 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and get this together and we'll come back in a few minutes when it's a little bit cooler. Hi, this is Joe from the future. Uh, well, the future of the video, but the past of things that are happening. Anyways, the point is I'm showing you how this ice, ice bath thing works. So you just put some ice in, a little bit of water in the sink and voila. All right, so we're down to 80 degrees. I had to take a break for a moment to uh, go put it in an ice bath, which uh, you did see just like a few seconds ago. Um, and I'm gonna pour just a little bit more water because this, this is at the one gallon point and we can pour just a little bit more cold water in um, just uh, to bring it up. And I'm gonna let that kind of go back down inside. I may have poured just a bit too much in there, but it'll be okay because uh, the foam will stop. But basically the water line should be about right here uh, and then the foam will go back down inside. And if I'm correct, that should put us down about 75 degrees. Yeah, it's still like right at 80. But, so what that does for us is that gets us to a good pitching temperature, um, which will let us, then that's what it's called when you throw the yeast inside. What's it called when you throw the yeast inside? Are you paying attention? Well, what's the word? Pitching. 
Yes, that's correct, Costello. It's pitching. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and toss some of this stuff in here. So I forgot to mention that I also put raisins in here. Um, so make sure that they get down inside the... Um, oh, they're not wanting to go down in. I may have to try it a different way. Get that going in. That didn't work out the way I expected for it to. Well, you get to see warts and all here. Um, I'm going to have to make it go back through the other way. Uh, the raisins didn't want to come out. Neither did the allspice berries. Oh no, and I have just a little bit too much liquid in here. So, we're going to get to see all the mistakes happen all at once. I'm going to go back down in, pull out a little bit of the liquid. It's not much. Just a little bit. And I'll set that aside. Um, in the hydrometer. And that'll tell us what our, maybe it'll tell us what our reading is. Might be a good reading, might be a bad reading. But, try to put the raisins and everything in again. Might have to drop them in one by one. That'll make for interesting viewing, I am sure. Um, but it already smells wonderful. Can you smell that, Hassel? Mm -hmm. Smell it, yeah. Doesn't does it smell great? It smells like delicious grape beverage. And as you can see, I introduced more oxygen in. Oxygenating it yet once again. We may not pour all of the liquid back in there. <laughs> we may pour only some of it back in. This will tell us if we hit our target ABV. All right, so. I think I've got all the stuff down in here like it was supposed to. I normally don't do this by hand, but like I said, the raisins for some reason clogged up the stuff. So there's all of our liquid. Let's see where we are here. So, One point oh seven. That is a little low on the gravity compared to what I had last time. So, what I think I'm going to do because I added a little bit of rum in this, it may have adjusted the volume some for this. So, what I am going to do is set this aside. I'm going to take another gravity reading just to see if that's what it is. Uh, and if I need to add any other sugar, I may need to add a little bit more um, honey to this. Yeah. So um, let's go ahead and pour that out, if you don't mind, because I need to get rid of some of this uh, here, because now it's at, it's at one gallon. Um, I like to leave a little bit of head space, get it right up to this area of the neck here. Uh, thank you. Oh, would you put the uh, hydrometer back in there? Thank you. All right. Let's get that in here. Make sure I've got a good reading. Do, 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 do. This is going to be compelling content watching me do this two times in a row. See if I got up to the gravity that I expected it to be. Should be around 1.10. Somewhere between 1.18, yeah, that's that's right. So yeah, I was getting some was getting some weirdness because of the rum. So just to make sure, that's 1.08. I will call that right. So is that that what that says? 1.08. Okay, 1.08. That's what that's what we were looking for, and uh, we have a ton of foam that got all over everything else. So. 
I'm going to pour this back in because I want to be able to have every last little drop of fluid that I can for my um, my stuff, my, my alcohols um, to be able to ferment. Now this time, last time we used, for the yeast nutrient, we used Fermax. This time, what we're going to use is yeast holes. So I want to put the same amount of yeast holes that I've been did in a Fermax. Do you think that you could uh, put, make sure it's dry, and then put one and a half, um, are they dry? Mm -hmm. Okay. Put one and a half teaspoons of yeast holes in there while I wipe this down, as everybody can see I'm wiping this down. Getting off camera, wiping it down. There we go. All right. Oh, well, well. So put two. <laughs> we had a little spill on the outside. There's yeast holes all down the back. Ah, oh, they're dying. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's about one and a half. Uh, and, and this is a sanitized cloth. It was, it was all in sanitizer. That's why I was sitting over there. That's why I use these this way. Now we're going to put in one half packet of Lawland EC118 which is the yeast that we're going to use for this. Um, and then we're going to mix it up, and then we'll be done. So a little bit more. That's about half a packet. Uh, and the reason I use this super sci uh, scientific method um, is because it just seems to work. Um, I got it off of uh, City Steady when I was watching one of their videos before I measured everything out. You know, I use this exact amount. But uh, it seemed to give my yeast a better chance of um, working out after a, I had like a mishap. And that in there. And um, I've seen them give a pretty good result in the past. I'm using that instead of Fermax because I want to know which one's the better thing for me. What works better for me? I can't say what will work better for everyone. So now that we've done this uh, and we have this all set up, I need to get the rubber band method going. And, and as always, Take, double it over, and then hook it here, and hook it here. Right here on top of the, the uh, bung for the, the stopper, and right here uh, down near the top, near the bottom of the um, line. But we are good now. We have made a pie mint, uh, or, or uh, as some people may call me out for, this may actually be more of a um, wine, that's honeyed. But either way, we've made our pie mint. I may back sweeten it a little bit because uh, I got it up to 1.0 before, so I'm gonna see what happens when it eats all the sugar out. We may add some more, 1.10, uh, uh, we may add some more sugar to this, uh, some more honey to this to bring the that um, ABV up a bit uh, because there's a little bit of room to do that. So I may add another pound or two of honey into this and we'll see how it goes either way uh, we'll catch you next time thanks for watching really appreciate it have a good one